on the IRS's own website. It says, quote, one of the advantages of operating your own business is hiring family members. Now, while hiring a child may not be the first thing that many business owners think of, if you do it properly, there can be many tax benefits to doing so. Stick around and I'll explain how to strategically hire your child, creating tax savings for you now and for your child forever. I'm Colin Exelby and I'm the owner of a virtual financial advisory practice, Celestial Wealth Management. Now my two children see all the work that I put into building this business and guiding clients to keep more of what they earn. And one of my goals is to instill that entrepreneurial spirit into each of my girls. My oldest currently has three businesses and recently opened her first bank account to hold the earnings. My youngest, not so much. If you have a child, be sure to check out my video on Banking 101, opening the first bank account for your child. I'll put a link to it in the notes below. Now, having my children work in the business as early as possible has many advantages. We get to spend more time together. I can help them create solid work habits and time management skills. But most of all, there are several tax benefits that may be available when parents hire their minor children to work in the family business. Now these benefits have been around for hundreds of years, back to the days when children worked on the family farm. There aren't nearly as many family farms as in the 1880s now, but there are many individual businesses that can still use the strategy. Of course, you can't hire your children, pay them and not have them do any work. This only applies if your child is paid a reasonable wage for performing work directly related to your business. If your children are dependents and under the age of 18, it's important to follow the correct procedures. What age can a child begin work in a business? Tax court has upheld that children as young as seven can work in the business as long as child labor laws are followed. How much can they earn tax-free? The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act roughly doubled the standard deduction to help those in lower tax brackets. This means children are able to have more income than ever taxed at the 0% rate. The largest benefit to hiring a minor child is to shift income from the parent's higher income tax bracket to the child's lower tax brackets. In 2021, the standard deduction for individuals, which includes children, is $12,550. A family where a parent owns a business and is in a fairly high tax bracket can stand to have quite a tax savings by paying the minor child in the 0% federal bracket. What about the kitty tax? Well, the dreaded kitty tax is not a factor here because that tax is only on unearned income like capital gains, dividends, and interest. Income generated from working is earned income, so the kitty tax doesn't apply. Now let's head over to the whiteboard and check out an example of how this might happen. All right, we're now over here at the whiteboard. We're getting ready to go through an example about how someone might actually put this strategy into play. So let's talk about my fictional friend, Scott. Scott owns a boat dealership here in Maryland. You know that boats have been flying off the shelves as have RVs, ATVs, really anything that you could do with your family outside did really well, okay? So let's assume that in 2020, Scott made $425,000 personally after all the expenses of the dealership. This puts him in the 35% tax bracket, okay? All right, these are the assumptions we're going to use for this example. Now, Scott has three kids, ages 10, 12, and 16, and he decided to hire each of them to do legitimate work in the business. So they were with him all the time when they weren't in school, 
And they were doing things like cleaning boats, prepping boats, uh, cleaning the facilities, filing, doing data entry, social media marketing. And because they're each different ages, they were doing different things. But because they were working so much at the dealership, he was able to pay them the standard deduction in 2020, which is $12,400. And because he paid all three of them that number, his total expense was $37,200, okay? Now that $37,200 reduces his taxable income, right? So instead of having that $425,000, this $37,200, what you do is you multiply that by the 35% and you get $13,020 in tax savings federal tax savings that you would have been paying to the government that you're now not paying because that 37,200 is now an expense to the business. Make sense? Okay. What about the second part of this? If we assume that Scott's children don't do any other work and how the heck could they when they're spending all the time with dad at the dealership when they're not in school and paying with their friends? If this is the only income that they have, that $12,400 is going to be taxed at what? It's going to be taxed at 0%. This is going to be tax-free income to each of the kids. That's incredible. You know, essentially, that means that that entire $13,020 of tax savings, you're going to get that down here too. So it really is $13,020 of tax savings. It's not like you're saving it here, but you're going to be spending it down at this level. No, this goes all the way through because the kids are in the 0% bracket. So they're going to be getting that money tax-free as well. Business deduction reduces the business income. Money comes to the children. It's not taxed. This is really an incredible strategy. Okay? So... If Scott is contributing to a 529, if he is giving them allowance, he is now partnered with Uncle Sam, where Uncle Sam is paying for part of his kid's education and part of their allowance. I mean, how great is that? Okay. What's even better? What if you're in a business where you are close to the QBI phase out limits? Okay. The qualified business income deduction phase outs. Well, in 2020, that number was 329,800 for joint filers, so Scott wouldn't be able to use it. But for a lot of you out there, you may be in that area where if you could get under that level, which you know goes up a little bit each year, if you can get under that level, you could get the full 20% deduction. If you're above that level, it phases out, and depending upon the industry that you're in, you might receive next to nothing in that QBI deduction. Well, this is a way where you would be able to take money that you're already giving to your children, do it in an acceptable way, paying them through the business to reduce your income to get down below the threshold. And if you do that, you're going to get a larger QBI deduction. I think this is just an incredible way to do it. So let's head back over and learn more. What procedures should you follow when hiring a child under 18? When employing your child, you want to make the process as audit proof as possible. You'll want to keep a timesheet showing the dates and hours worked, the services performed, along with proof of payment and receipt of payment. You can't pay in pizza slices in Kansas Soda. To start off, fill out a Form W-4 that's for your child for your records. Next, create a job description and informal contract between your company and your child. Create a spreadsheet to track the dates, the times worked, and the services performed. According to the IRS website, wages of a child under age 18 who works for his or her parent in a trade or business are not subject to Social Security and Medicare taxes if the trade or business is a sole proprietorship 
or a partnership in which each partner is a parent of the child. Whew, that was a mouthful. So if you're running a small sole proprietorship or a partnership, you can get off and start running right now. If you've got an S Corp, I'll get to you in just a minute. From my discussions with CPAs, as well as my own independent research, there is some conflict over whether you actually need to issue a W-2 from the business for your child. Because you're not required to withhold FICA, FUTA, or SUTA taxes for your dependent minor child, there's an argument that can be made that a W-2 doesn't need to be issued. You could, as a business owner, write off the expenses outside labor to get the deduction and just be done with it. In my opinion, even though the wages of the child under 18 are not subject to Social Security and medical taxes, it still is a good idea to file the W-2. The W-2 is one of the ways you can sufficiently document your child receiving earned income. The records that you keep, including the job description and the timesheet, are typically all the proof that you need, but in my opinion, the W-2 is the cherry on top. How should your child receive the funds? Now, as I talked about earlier, you don't want to pay your child in pizza and soda. There's an often cited story where a business owner paid their children in pizza because that's what they preferred. Well, the tax courts frowned upon this strategy. Ideally, you want to have your child on your payroll and pay the funds directly to a bank account in their name. Since they're a minor, that would most likely be a custodial account for their benefit. This helps to close the loop and show receipt of payment. In addition, the account makes it much easier to fund the strategies that I'm gonna be talking about in just a minute. Does your child need to file a tax return since they're earning money? Your children, who often make less than the standard deduction, most likely do not need to file a tax return. Now there's a questionnaire that's used by the IRS to determine if you do need to file a tax return. I'll include a link to that in the notes below. In the vast majority of cases, no return needs to be filed because the income is less than the standard deduction. But it is possible they would need to file if their unearned income was greater than certain amounts or they were eligible for different tax credits. If you're unsure if your child needs to file a tax return, just talk to a qualified tax advisor. Even though the child's wages aren't subject to FICA taxes, they are still subject to federal withholdings unless the child is exempt. So the child should ideally receive funds from payroll and a W-2 from the business. Those funds should actually be deposited into an account for them to complete the cycle. In my opinion, this helps prove earned income, which can be valuable later in the process. What if you don't have a sole proprietorship or a partnership? Well, if you run an S Corp or a C Corp, you are not eligible for special employment breaks on FICA taxes. So if you own a corporation, you ideally don't wanna pay your children from the company, but there are other options. One of the most common ways is to create a separate sole proprietorship or partnership called a family management company. This separate entity is eligible for the FICA tax savings because it is a sole proprietorship or a partnership. The family management company is the one that would hire the children and contract a fee with your S Corp or your C Corp to provide the services. Now, if you pursue this more sophisticated approach to paying your children, be very vigilant in maintaining proper books and records. You always want to maintain them, but in this strategy, it's of utmost importance. Make sure to have a copy of the contract between the family management company and the company hiring the children. If the family management company were also able to provide those services to another non-family related company, that would help provide additional validity to this strategy. Since the family management company is the actual employer of the children, payroll and W-2s should be run through that company and likely a tax return as well. It is possible that for some business owners, all this extra work could outweigh the monetary benefits. You wanna evaluate that for yourself. What about hiring your child who's over 18? 
Well, if you're paying children 18 or older, you have the option of treating them as subcontractors or as employees. If you decide to pay them as a subcontractor, just issue a 1099 in January like any other subcontractor. But remember, if you hire them as a full-time employee of the company, they must be treated like one. There's no special treatment. Your child would file a small business Schedule C, get to take business tax deductions, and take a standard deduction of $12,550 in 2021, which gets adjusted for inflation each year, they will probably be in a lower tax bracket than you. This can provide tremendous tax savings. Now, as children get older, in my opinion, having them involved in the business on a board of directors or a board of advisors, if it's an LLC, can provide many benefits, both financial and educational. Invest the funds. All right, now that you've properly hired your children in the business for legitimate work, and have set up payroll, where do the funds go? First, there should be a bank account that would receive the funds. This helps complete the circle from business expense to payroll to receipt of funds. But should you just leave the funds in there? Heck no! This is where the real benefits of this strategy kick in for your child. In my opinion, the number one place to begin accumulation of funds is in a custodial Roth IRA for the benefit of the minor child. Look, we have no idea what future tax rates will be, but a Roth IRA allows one to contribute after tax funds, which these would be, and have the funds grow without taxes, and then take the funds out without taxes as long as a few rules are followed. And because your child would be in the 0% bracket, this is a way for you to turn below the line saving strategy into an above the line business expense and triple tax free benefit for your child's future. Now, in order to make a Roth IRA contribution, an individual must have earned income, which is why we're hiring them. It also must be below a certain income threshold. Currently, that's in the six figures and adjusted annually. In 2021, they would be eligible to make a contribution of up to $6,000 or the amount of earned income they had, whichever is lower. You can't contribute more than the earned income that they had. This small amount of savings can really add up over time to potentially large sums of tax-free money for future use. Now, in addition to the Roth IRA, you could direct the earned income into an education fund for college or private high school. The after-tax funds contributed, again, they're contributed at the child's 0% rate, could be invested in a 529 plan and grow without taxes. As long as those funds are used for qualified educational costs of either private high school, trade school, or college, the distributions are also tax-free. Now, you, the business owner, get a tax deduction for paying your child to work for you, which is probably money you were going to give the child anyway. They don't pay any tax on the income, as long as it's less than the standard deduction. They don't file a tax return, and you can take those funds and contribute to their future retirement through a tax-free Roth IRA or their college education through a tax-free 529. Mind blown. That sounds like an incredible plan. Well, these are two excellent ways to create tax-free wealth for your children while instilling in them life skills such as time management, entrepreneurship, and work habits. You also get to spend more time with your family. Now, one item I do want to make note of is the potential impact of financial aid. Typically, 50% of a student's income is counted toward their expected family contribution when you're applying for financial aid. But for students entering college in 2021, the first $6,970 of income is exempt from the FAFSA calculation. Now that's more than the maximum contribution to the Roth IRA. That amount generally increases by about $100 a year. 
Now, this is relevant for children who are at least sophomores in high school because these are the years that are used to calculate financial aid. This Roth IRA strategy shouldn't be an issue for financial aid because of the way that structure is set up. If you have any questions on how you could potentially employ these strategies, visit my website at celestialwm.com or speak with your CPA. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please give the video a like. Sharing this video really helps my channel. So if you think there's someone that you know that could benefit from these strategies, make sure you share it with them. And if you have any comments to add, please do so in the comments section below.